Well, good afternoon, family. How are my social media family? I love y'all in this show. I love y'all so much. But I wanted to come on today. Glory to God, I tell you. Hallelujah. It's always good to be um, with you. Coming on with a word today. You know, I just want to come and encourage you. Uh, this is a very, you know... <laughs> who y'all pray for me this is a very um sensitive area because guess what my name is Teresa and I am a silent sufferer whole lot let me but at the same time I've overcome the whole lot and um God put this on my heart and at first I wasn't prepared you know I was like God and he kept saying he said told me just a few minutes ago he said do it now so you know I, I've want to encourage you today you know with this word from the lord and i hope that it helps it heals you know it changes your minds it delivers you know just to totally bless you as we're all you know i'm a work in progress dealing with suffering in silence but first let's go to our bibles because it's a word go to your bibles right now if you have it your ipads whatever you know go with me come on let's take this journey okay amen um go with me to the book of acts chapter three a little lengthy uh scripture today but um, i'm gonna try to make it quick um acts chapter three verses one through ten i'm going to read it for you in the new living translation i tell you that new living translation y'all it's something else it is something else pray that lord the new <laughs> living translation who pray for me because i am very nervous but this is um I'm going to be very trans, I'm going to be as transparent as the Lord allows. Um, go with me to this real quick, Acts 3, verse 1 through 10. And it says, New Living Translation, it says, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put aside, he, I mean, I'm sorry, each day he was Put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intended, intently, and Peter said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was the lame beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were astounded. Hallelujah. They were astounded. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you again. I come to you this afternoon with my social media family, Lord God, with this subject you placed within my spirit because within the season that I am in, you, uh, you told me, and I am grateful that you're using me. So let this word, you know, prick the hearts and every mind of all the ones that may suffer in silence in the name of Jesus. Lord God, so I open myself up now. I decrease so that you can increase in me. Lord God, give us all an ear to hear. Prepare our hearts and our mind to receive from your word to help us and to deliver us and to heal us, Lord God. We give you all the glory and honor now. And I just thank you, Lord God. Holy Spirit, take over. Take over right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, our topic. You know, I'm calling all the silent sufferers. It is the time is now. It's time to rise up. Amen. Now, as the scripture, as I read in Acts 3, verses 1 through 10, we see here that Peter and John, they were going into the temple one afternoon to take part, you know, they were taking in part 
excuse me, on their service, the red clock service. And there was this beggar that was always sitting beside the gate, begging for money. And so uh, basically Peter and John one day came by and they saw him and he's, you know, Peter said, look at me. And with um, the beggar didn't know, he just thought, hey, you know, they're going to give me some money. But um, Peter gave him what he needed. He gave him what he needed, not what he wanted. Amen. And then he showed the people when he told him to rise up and he helped him up. And then he took him into the temple. And um, when everyone saw that the man and everybody like, that's the same man that used to be begging by the gate. So yeah, he can walk now. Amen. Um, sometimes um, dealing with suffering and silence with this scripture, God led me to this scripture because at times uh, silent sufferers, we can... Um, <clears throat> We can put on a facade. We can sit there and we can um, participate or we can ask or we can beg of something that technically we don't really need. We want it. Amen. The, Peter saw that really what he needed, even though the beggar never said it out of his mouth, even though um, he never, um, you know, uh, didn't say anything but inside he saw the inside of him that what he really yearned and desired was healing and that's what Peter gave him because sometimes our silent sufferers will um ask for things or will pray for things to God or will ask for things of our families there to just kind of pacify the real deep core hurt that or whatever is going on that we can that we have experienced when it's nothing but a temporary band-aid and sometimes silent sufferers um we tend to think that it's okay we're good you know silent sufferers um then this is just my opinion um are sometimes some people that are very strong people and they can handle it they don't mind they don't mind handling it you know <clears throat> but um when we get weak we expect a quick fix and sometimes silent sufferers automatically think that their families and everybody know what's going on and we ain't gotta say nothing because we be like just do it just do it i ain't gotta be over explaining I, you know i'm sorry family my thing went out or something but anyway um with um as i was saying uh with silent um our silent sufferers we tend to uh want what we want when we want it um, but we, and then if we don't get, we'll just tend to do it ourselves and we'll tend to at times, not all, I'm just, you know, really speaking from me. Um, when I expect something done, I want it, you know, I'll be like, do it. And if it doesn't, then I'll be like, I'll just do it myself. Amen. But, um, basically Peter demonstrated that with God with the gift of discerning, he discerned in the spirit that the beggar, what he really needed, he gave him his needs and not what he wanted. Yeah, money, what? Money wouldn't have solved what he really saw in his spirit, what he desired. And see, so a lot of times, um, my silent sufferers, because I know I'm not the only one, when you are in a season and you are going through some things and, um, you don't want nobody to know. There's a balance that has to be uh, taking place. Personal, f first and foremost, and then, like I said, this is my opinion. You have to, number one, you have to acknowledge the hurt or the disappointment. You know, you have to acknowledge it. You know, you have to acknowledge what it is for what it is. You don't be sugarcoating it. Don't be trying to pacify it and you know, don't be trying to cover it up or make it you know, try to downplay it like, oh, it's not that bad. Call it, where is it? Like, you know, say back in the day, a jack is a jack. Can't call it what it is. A spade is a, is a spade. And then you have to take the time and take a moment and analyze whatever is the situation is. And then you seek God. First and foremost, of course, you seek God in prayer. 
but you have to be prepared to un to listen to what he says and to act. Cause you and acting comes when it's all about timing. For me, it's all about timing. So um, you have to with the situation when you know what the problem is. You know it needs to be dealt with. Because one thing about us silent sufferers, we are very exposed, and see that is a battle that we have to fight constantly, and it's the, the spirit of procrastination. Because we can identify with what the problem is, but then it depends on, I guess, how we feel. Because you know, sometimes you feel like a nut, and sometimes you don't. And so, you know, if we don't be careful, that thing will keep lingering on and lingering on, and then we say, "Well, I'm gonna get to it." Well, we don't even say nothing to nobody. We have it in our mindset that, hey, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. But, um, you know, I just want to encourage you that you have to first and foremost seek ye first the kingdom. God is a wonderful God, and that's what he's here for. And there are seasons and there are things in your life, and he wants you to know that you don't have to suffer alone. He said it in his word. He would never put more on us than we can bear. Amen. He said he would never put more on us than we can bear. And he tells us to seek ye first. There's so many scriptures that of course points to seeking God. So first and foremost, seek God first. Then you got to get past you because see it's a twofold fight for real. You got the spirit and the flesh. They always at war. And that's, that's the enemies, that's the war in you. And see, you got to be in control. You got to know your stuff. And you got to be honest about your stuff. Amen. You know, whatever season you may go through. Because me personally, um, you know, my family, my immediate family and friends, they know. You know, it's not that I think I'm superwoman or whatever. It's just that by nature... You know, because you could be an ex introvert or extrovert. By nature, I'm an introvert. So I'm by myself. You know, not that I just, you know, like to or whatever. But it's just, it's a natural thing. It doesn't bother me. Give me some juice and juice and some rocky. And, you know, I just get me. You know, I, I, I don't jump on the phone all the time. I'm not seeking to be around people all the time. So, you know, you got your, look, we got our silent sufferers and our public sufferers. Put it like that. So, um. You know, uh, me personally, um, I have to find balance because, number one, I love God and I love what God loves. And I do love God's people and I love helping God's people. But you do have to have a balance even when confiding in people. So I'm always going to God in prayer. You know, um, some people, uh, they, uh, I, 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 I mean, I, I don't know, they, they need well, I'll put it like this. Some needy people. Some there are people that are very, very needy. They need to be around a lot of people. They need they don't like to be alone, you know, or so but to be healthy, you know, everything is a balance in life. You have to balance things out. There are there there are times and moments that yes, God will require you you just need to be by yourself. Amen. You need to be by yourself. And um you know, um, I can uh, say, for example, you know, and you have to use the spirit. You have to ask God to give you the discerning of the spirit on issues in your life, which will, you know, um, ask him to give you which you're required to either be by yourself or send me someone that can help me through this. Now, um, you know, lately there even with death you know i have lost over the past five years but i've been to many funerals you know but the past five years they had the people that had left me they were more they were close people compared to you know somebody that you may know of or you went to school with or something like that um and so i had to ask god because i'm like lord you know, because this is real close to home and especially uh, the death of my sister. You know, I didn't know how to act. 
I, I, I really didn't. I mean, it was like I was like I, I wanted to be by myself, but then I wanted to be people. You wanted, you know. Then I was like, I wanted to be in church. I wanted my church family to pray for me and stuff. And then I was like, mm, I don't know about all. The, you know, it was. It really took me through a leap through certain deaths and up. Uh, of course, because of the relationship, but. The important thing, um, family, I want you to know is you got to trust God and, and you got to be honest about your stuff. It's okay. It's okay. If you may say you made to him, tell God. If you angry, say that. If you about to flip out, tell him that too. You know, don't try to you know when you go into prayer you know oh lord you know jesus no no because i go to god when the situation go down i'm like look jesus uh you already know my flesh i know my flesh and i'm about to you know you have to be honest with him he loves that even though he know but see you got to understand you're in a relationship amen so i love that peter used with the discerning of the spirit and see we have to pray for people that will be discerning and authentic as that he saw a need and he met it no questions asked amen so silent sufferer you know us we have to also also we have to allow however uh the help is you have to allow it in you have to receive it you know and receive it in love because, see, one thing the enemy does for silent sufferers, you know, when he isolates, of course, here, here goes some of the things we think. Nobody understands. Nobody knows the level of what I'm going through. See, that's one thought. That's a, that's a lie from the pit of death. It's, you know, that's from the lie from the devil. Nobody knows. Nobody can understand. And then sometimes we be thinking, you know, we the only ones in the world that's going through what we going through. That's the trick of the enemy in your mind. Amen. And so you have to, when those thoughts, you have to combat it with the word of God. Greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. He said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, I'm always to be the head and not the tail. You know, I am the redeemed of the Lord, and he be, and he that begun a good work in me shall complete it to the coming of the Lord Jesus. And he's not going to do it with me withdrawn and being all fearful and scared. So for me, um, you know, I I'm constantly praying, you know, and sometimes I can be too much for myself. God will let me know quick. All right, pull up. Because... You have to understand when you're in a relationship with God, you have your part to do. He has his part to do. See, my thing was I was trying to do it all. I thought I used to, I used to try to help Jesus out, you know, his situation. And I'm thinking in my humanness. Now, remember that the word says his ways are higher than our ways. Amen. But, you know, because my love for him and the relationship that me and him in and my family and friends, and I know some of them more because, you know, I told them to be on to support me in this. Um, they um, they know because of, and not me meaning any harm. It's just the love. It's just who I am by nature. I love helping. And if I can do it, let's do it, hit it, and be done with it. See, I'm I'm like, when there's a task in front of me, my mind goes into, pro, it's, I, I guess, robot program mode. I When you ask me to do something, all I'm focusing on is getting the job done, and I'm out. I ain't got time for no hemming and hawing. Just that in the third. I be like, look, tell me what you want, what we got to do, blah, blah, blah. Let's hit it, bam, bam, bam. I ain't trying to be all day, all night, and I ain't trying to let my mind, because, see, I know how my mind is go. My mind go all over the place. My mind, I can go to zero and 100, and, and if you blink, that's it. So... You know, I'm sometimes I'm easily distracted sometimes. So see, when God tells me, and every day in my life, when I when when um, 
I go throughout my day and even at work, they know, okay? I'm like, you know, I don't already have it. And plus, I'm a visual learner. So I see, you know, I see what needs to be done. Or, you know, okay, Teresa, what we got to do? Boom, 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 boom. Oh, yep, that we going to do. And then after we boom, 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 we done. I'm out. Then I have to withdraw. You know, that's just me. And then I have to, you know, I need that quiet time or like, you know, and I'm like, Jesus, I did good. Did I did good. But also um, on the other side of it is when situations come, like I said, and we need help. It take us a long time. I mean, we got to go through a whole bunch just to pick up that phone or um, really say, hey, I need some help. Can you help me with this? And I think one of the reasons that a silent sufferer, it's so difficult for us to really reach out to ask for help. And can I say this? And some of y'all don't get offended with me. Then again, I don't even care because God just said I could say it. You know why it's hard? Because we don't want to hear nothing. We don't, we do not want to hear, we can't help you or no. It's hard that see that, that, that's a pill, right? That it's hard to you saying no when I know you can't. Then, no, this is the part. Hold up, let me, let me fix it. This way, we don't like it. Yet. We don't like it when we, at, when you are let to the person that got the goods or they got information and they say no that's the problem for me because the word says it do not withhold good to whom it is due when the, when the power is in your hands to do so something like that you know y'all look it up you know i got so much word in me um but for real that that see that i think that's in proverbs or something for real i can't i mean it'd be like you know what i ain't asking for a whole bunch of your time. I'm just asking for one thing. You could just point me in the right direction and boom, I'm out your head. But for you to say, well, I can't help you. And I know that you can help me. Or I know that you got the information. Or I know that you can kind of point me in the right direction. And you're going to say no. Oh, shucks. <laughs> you know, in, in my, and that's what I go through. Cause then I go to God, I was like, see God, that's why I, I, that's why I got to stay to myself or I had to Google it. And, and it's like, we scrounge around and try to find the answers ourselves. And then we all stressed out. And then of course the enemy comes in. I told you, I told you, you know, you was all right by yourself. Everybody keep talking about they going to help you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. God, but mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But what I've learned, you know, what we have to be comfortable with, you know, that when we hear no, and this is what I, this is what I learned, and this is what I've been practicing for years. I got this thing. I got this thing. Um, so I, like I said, situation. I asked someone. It was at the job. I knew what they could do. I knew what they could point me to you know the information to you know learn a certain thing because i was told that they did because they helped another person in that area but they helped that person but told me no oh i just had an attitude but then again you know i eventually got it you know god of course because my god god's like that's cool because what i learned is to accept no i don't get mad no more Cause one thing I be thinking, y'all family, I be like, shit, that's probably one less personal problem I have to be connected or deal with. So see, a lot of times when God, when a person tells you no, and he can lead you to ask someone when you ask, because he said, he said in this word, you have not cause you ask now. Okay. Even if you ask and you're not given, or even if, um, you're asked and, um, my met family, even if you are asked and they say no don't fret 
just think, well, that saves you the aggravation. Because first of all, you don't know where that person coming from. You don't know what's going on with them. You don't know what spirits on them. You don't know where, you know, none of that. So maybe whatever they had going on or got going on, guess what? You ain't got to deal with it. Amen. So that's a good thing because maybe getting it from them would have been costly. You know what I'm saying? It'll cost you some stuff. Because we also have to understand when you ask people to do things, you know, you got to think, okay, it's going to cost you some time. You know what I'm saying? You got to think of the consequences to connect. Okay, what, what I'm about to get myself into. So that's why we definitely have to always um, submit and be mindful and strengthen in the area of the spirit of discerning, the discerning of the spirit. Um, you know, and you have to, those that suffer in signs, you have to be honest about, um, like I said, you be honest about your stuff. You always submit everything to God and never be afraid. Never let the enemy try to make you feel like, you know, um, you're not good enough. Cause that's what we think. We think, okay, when we hear no, that we ain't good enough. You know, we're not good enough, but let me read you something. Let me read you five that I, um, researched. Five ways, and this is uh, a monster. This is this is generated, and that's the spirit of anger. That's a monster in itself. But how do you defeat a monster? Just like you hear, you know, how do you eat an elephant? You can eat it one bite at a time. And see, I'm bite, I'm telling you, baby, that anger. I've been I've been biting, biting, always oh, going down and down. And the anger monster. What we at a point now? Whatever. Yes, the Bible says you angry, sin not. Yeah, nothing wrong with you to, to be upset because we're not perfect. But, you know, you know your stuff and I know man's. But here's five ways uh, to handle anger in the biblical way. Number one, before letting anger erupt, remember that God works through trials. Think about how God would have, hand, would have you handle the situation so that when people see your true colors, they are beautiful and not something to be ashamed of. Consider how he might be maturing you in your faith and pray for, pray for him to work in you through the challenge. Amen. That's number one. If you want to write it down, these are five ways uh, to handle anger. Because you know our sound suffers. You know, most of us, we deal with the anger. I know I do. You know. So my first one, I said before letting that anger erupt, Remember that God works through trials. Think about how God would have you handle the situation so that when people see your true colors, they are beautiful and not something to be ashamed of. Consider how he might be maturing you in faith and pray for him to work in you through the challenges. So when you are in a difficult situation, whether dealing with people and stuff like that, you know, and, and, and people could be, you know, acting crazy, you don't act crazy with them. Even if somebody pop off at you, you know, you got it. That's why I said you have to be honest about your stuff. You you hold your tongue, you hear me? And you got to and always keep in mind that God is right beside you. If you keep that in your forefront, wherever you go, you know, thou is with me. He's sitting right beside me at work. And when something go across the screen and I know in my flesh I'm about to pop off, I look to my side and I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, right here. Because what he's doing is he's working through the trials and he's maturing us in our faith. Let me hurry up and go because I'm not going to hold y'all hats because I got to go. Amen. Um, but we are going to touch base because there are some other things that I want to share. So this will be like a part one, a part. And the next time I come on, I'll share part two of it. Um, but I want to leave you with these five things. Okay. Amen. Um, number two, let God do his job. Basically, like I said, instead of trying to do it for him, when we have been hurt or wrong, we want the one who brought us pain to feel pain themselves. We want to shun them, give them silent treatment or hurt them with words. We want someone to get back at them for what they have done after all they deserve it. But if there is one thing I know, God is a righteous and just God. And we always trust that he knows what is going on and he will see to it that justice takes place. And you know us silent suffering because God will we be boy, boy, let somebody hurt us and wrong and do us. 
We'll hold our tongue. We sure will. But we up here plotting and planning like, mm, 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 Jesus. Ooh, I'm going to get that person back. Mm, mm, mm. But. Family, you have to understand. You gotta let God do his part. See, God knows what you don't know. Because when that person is away from you, when they're in their home and they're behind the scenes, you don't know nothing about it. But God do. So see, that's why <clears throat> trust is so important to have with God. Because when you build your trust as he's working and maturing your faith, he will lead you to the people that you can trust. Oh, he'll tell you. Because that's the design of the spirits. He'll tell you. And I mean, man, him, we've been on, we've been for years. He's been sharp with me with that. You know, I could say, you know, he'll tell me quick. Uh, uh, uh. So Teresa, no. Don't fool with that. Don't even go to that person. Don't say nothing. I'll be like, you ain't got to say nothing but a word, <laughs> Jesus. Only got to tell me one time. Amen. So, and number three, because I got five real quick. Let me hurry up. Don't keep it all inside. Talk it out. The longer we hold out anger in, the more agitated it can become. So when it erupts, the outcome will always be ugly. Man, that's why I say talk to God about your feelings and talk to someone you trust who can support your decision to let your anger go. I'm so glad uh, for the people that are in my corner. Um very few but i'm surprised that god has given him you know he's opening doors i'm so blessed to have my family and my core people and you know they know i joke all the time i always tell you, you know you pray god god can pick some crazy people because see i know my stuff and i'm honest with them and they know it and the beautiful thing is they they just like peter when i'm in a situation and then, yeah, I'm venting whatever, and I may be in my feelings, and I want them to, you know, just agree with me. Yeah, just, you know, because my, my plan and what I'm saying, ain't I right? They they see past all that, and they just go right for the kill. They like, boop, that's what you need. I hear what you're saying, Teresa, and you know all that, because <laughs> they know how I get, amen, I love them in pieces. But they, God will, I mean, they come in a stage, you know. This is what it is. And I just goes off. They be like, we're going to give up about, one of my uh, core people be like, I'm going to give up about a couple more minutes. You know, I'm going to see, you know, when soon as she break, because they know I can go, you know. Um, and when I'm too silent, see, that's what gets some of them. They like, because we know Teresa, we know her heart. But guess what, family? And I'll share this real quick. But from the ages of 6 to 12, I had, I was very shy. People don't believe some of them. They was like, you was, you had the spirit of shyness. From the age 6 to 12, I was shy. I'm talking. So. It was like when the teacher, I need an answer. I was so afraid to talk in front of people. So I would go all the way up to the teacher. I would raise her. She'd be like, you know, answer questions. What's, who know the answers to five plus seven? And I know she'll say, Teresa. And I get up, she'll call me. I'll get up out my seat, go to her, go, in, go to her and say, And she was like, okay. And so then she'll say, write it on the board. And I'll look around and, I, and then I'll go to my seat. And then every time she did, I mean, in the class, we like, oh, 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 pick me, pick me, Miss Brass, pick me, pick me. You know, everybody, I wouldn't do that. I just had my hand up. And then she'd be like, well, who know, you know, or who can spell? I had my hand up. You know, who can spell the word Trump? And then I'll come all the way up to her. And so... <laughs> Lord have mercy. Boy, I can laugh about it now. I think when we think back on your past, but um, it was nothing but God. And, and you know, the school they do. So as time went on, and God broke me out of it by 12. It was all, you know, 12, you hit puberty. I, that, that's a whole other subject. I was on chain. You know, that that's when the chain or whatever, I don't know what. I don't think I never had one. Amen. It was just endurement. Hallelujah. 
All right, let me move on. I got to go. I am doing well. Give me about 15 more minutes. Of, then, you know, let y'all go. Number four, if you can't change the person or circumstance which have angered you, change yourself. Anyone can return evil for evil, but it takes a courageous person in Christ to allow love to flow from our hearts instead of hatred. Even if your mind wants to take revenge, talk to God about helping you have the willpower to offer forgiveness. It might not change the external problem, but it will change your internal ability to handle the situation. Hallelujah. Didn't I just say that? See, you got to pray and you got to involve God. When people anger us, yes, I go through it. I be like, Lord, you got to turn your head for two seconds. And I'm telling you, I cross back over. But then at times I look at the situation and even though I know they wrong or whether I'm wrong, you know, I'll quickly forgive them. And, you know, I'll quickly say, let's come, let's talk about this. Let's not fight about this. Let's come and uh, reason together. I understand your anger at me. You didn't like what I said or what I did, you know, or I apologize that what I did and said angered you. But it wasn't right of you to do what you've done to me in anger. Because you could have talked to me, you know. Or we could have talked it, we could have talked this thing out instead of you lashing out. See, when you get to that level in your relationship, God will get you to that maturity level. And even if you can't change the person's mind or whatever, and they still won't have an attitude, it's okay, you let it go. Don't take it back. You know how us sound. We take it back with us and we get in silent. And then next you know, we're pushing our family and kids away because we, we come up with an attitude because your mind focused on what that person done did to you. And yeah, the next time I see, that's too much work. Too much work within yourself. And it holds your process up as your journey and in life. Amen. I've learned that. Um, and I had to learn that the hard way. Um. So I encourage you that, you know, when you're in a situation, like it says, you know, you can't change the person's situation, take it to God, but you change yourself on it. You change your view, you change your perception and say, you know what, I'm not even going to go, I'm not even going to do that. You know, I'm not going to anger myself or pump myself up or come to that level. I'm not even going to do that. It takes too much time. And number five. Remember that no matter how justified we feel in our anger, no matter how hopeless a situation seems, and no matter how or agitating a situation may be, God is always there to help us deal with our anger in the right way. Yes, he is. He is so faithful. And um, I'm telling you, whew, I feel a relief. Uh, because I do struggle at times, but I have overcome. I'm an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. And um, that's just, I guess, how I was by nature. I've always, I love to take care of people. I've taken care, you know, of my family. I've been a taken care of since I was six years old. And, um, but now I'm just at the point where we're at a season of me really having to have to take care of me, mind, body, and spirit, and for God to allow him to take care of me through people, you know. Yes, when he tells me or show me certain people that's coming in to help or whatever their reasoning may be, yeah, I get a little skittish itish because I, you know, and then I, my, can see, <laughs> my emotions were on my face when somebody coming to me with some stuff, I'm like, okay, God, you already know the five questions get ready to come out. What you want? Why are we doing this? What's going on? The who, what, when, where, why, and how this gonna happen? You know, it's like even in my silence, that's what I'm screaming. I'm like, all right, what's the reasoning? <laughs> what's all this about? Amen. Because I need to know. And but my relationship with God, sometimes some things I don't need to know. And now, see, it's a balance in it. I'm like, shoot, I'm glad you ain't tell me, Jesus. Oh, I'm glad that. You know what? You shield me and covered me from that person or that thing because I ain't even know, you know, because I'm so glad when he do that. He saves me from me. 
And so I tell you, silent sufferers, it is time to rise up. Amen. Come up out of that dark place. God is calling you out of your dark places because one thing about us is that there you have some things in you and those things that the enemy will try to silence you on is what is needed for the world, is what is needed in the season. It is what is needed for your family or whomever uh, God is ministering and creating you and leading you and guiding you to be. Amen. You need to come out. First and foremost, don't think. You know, because one thing that we also battle with is that we feel weak if we discuss our testimony. Yeah, some things are challenging. Some things are painful. And I'm not saying you're supposed to be all open and run and tell your business or you're supposed to be out here jumping in everybody's business. No, you have to find balance. Always keep God first. Amen. And he'll tell you what's for your, he will, because I ask him everything. <laughs> for real, I ask him about everything. When people ask me or family ask me, they want me to come to the Lord, stop and function. I'd be like, God, you want me to go? He'll say it real quick. Hey, God, I know his voice. Yes or no. He very direct. He very direct. And so now, man, his relationship, we had a point. I don't ch- At first, I used to challenge it because some things I would want to go to. And I'd want to go to with the girl, the ladies and stuff. He'd be like, yeah, mm mm-mm. And I'm like, why, God? Why can't I go? Why won't I go? You know, he'd be like, mm-mm. Mm-mm. And so now I don't question him because I've learned. You know why? Because he protected me. And there are some things and places that we don't need to be. You know, that the environment is not conducive. No, it doesn't make us, it doesn't make any of God's people better. But especially for the silent sufferer, you have to be mindful of what you can digest, what you can intake, and also what you can give out. Because a lot of times, if a, if a situation for me, if it's too toxic, because I can't do drama, I'm for real, Teresa, I, I, I can't do no drama, I'm out, for real, I'm, I'm, I am, I'm gone, because, and then a lot of times, they like, why she leave, or why she, leave? I'm, because what's going on here, if I stay another second, it's going to be some problems, and not only that, look at it as a gift. From me to you, because I'm saving you from me. I got to get a body. Amen. You know, God wants us happy. He wants us whole. He wants us safe. And he wants us to live the life Jesus died so that we can have life and have it abundantly. Living, it's not about hiding and thinking you can take everything in. Living is not about, you You know, you, um, that you have to do it all. Be prayerful, strengthen your prayer life, strengthen your relationship, family with God and ask him to lead and guide you. And don't think that you have to do everything at one time. Oh, Lord, I'm talking to myself. (laughs) Don't think that you have to. I'm going to say that one again. You can do everything at one time. Oh, Lord. (laughs) Boy, I would get some phone calls with that one. But uh, once you really get it in some things and, and take your time don't be you ain't gotta rush everything do what you can do within the time of the block that you can do it pace yourself be cur- be persistent and be consistent amen because y'all know like i tell y'all time, i ain't working hard you forget that i look for real and the reason when somebody asked me why you keep saying you don't work hard i thought the lord said you have to work hard in your brain let me tell you something what I mean by that is, and I'm talking, you know, out in the world and naturally. I, and even, okay, put it like this. With God, I don't need to work hard. I just need to do what he tells me to do and do it when he says do it and how he says do it. And what I mean by working hard, I don't mean I don't have to overthink it. I don't have to be going to sleep worrying about it. I ain't got to do none of that. What I do is I focus myself on this is what God said, do it. This is when he said, do it. This is how he said, do it. It's finished. It's done. I'm out of here. That's how Jesus died on the cross. Kept it real simple. Jesus ain't over explained nothing. The whole process was never over explained. He ain't over explained nothing to them apostles. He demonstrated. He told them. He put the word. He did everything to secure what he was doing. And he was out. 
us believers, sometimes we have to do the same thing. Some of y'all over explain yourself too much. I, I just don't do that. When it's when it's the will of God, I ain't over explaining. I ain't doing that. I should not have to keep over explaining myself when it's the will of God. And you shouldn't either. When it's God's will, you have to don't worry about what nobody said because you're going to have your haters. Let your haters be your elevators. Oh, I like that one. Hallelujah. Let your haters be your elevator to rise you up to wherever you got to go. You know, because you're going to have the ones that's going to always criticize and say, what you doing? Why are you doing it this way? You should do it that way. And maybe this, and then sometimes, yes. And you know one thing about a silent suffering, I think this is a good, this is a good, this is a good pointer for me. When people or stuff start going down like that, zoop, I shut it down right there. I don't say nothing. I don't let ain't nothing come in there and ain't nothing going out, especially when it's the will of God. I'll be like, I don't hear that. I shut it all the way down. Because you that's over explaining. I ain't gotta over explain myself. I'm doing what God taught me to do. You know, I know the difference when I'm when Teresa's in Teresa's flesh and Teresa's in the spirit. Amen. And so a lot of times I know when I can be in the flesh, I can get real stubborn and bullheaded is what I say. It is what it is. But uh, most importantly, like I left you, um, you know, for those that have just joined, if you go back and review uh, the video, I've been discussing uh, the silent sufferers, God laid it on my heart. And plus it's something that I do, um, tend to, from time to time, from time to time, deal with the spirit of anger and suffering and silence with some things. Um, but true deliverance cannot come, uh, especially with the, with whatever God's will is on your life. When you try to shield yourself away from people or from, uh, Allowing God to use you however you see fit or when you try to think that you can handle it and do it. Amen. So uh, you have to be submissive. You have to have a submissive will, but it has to be submitted to God first. If you submit your mind, body and spirit unto him in due season and in due time, he will. You won't feel scared in front of people or you won't feel afraid of asking. And then nine times out of ten, you know. If God chose that person to help you, you ain't even got to say nothing. They're going to already know, just like Peter did in the scripture, when he saw with the discerning of the spirit, he knew what the beggar needed. He ain't need no money. He gave him something better than money, what he was, what, which he was hiding inside of him. And that is he desired to be healed. And that's what Peter gave. Now, yes, he was begging for money as a temporary fix for him to not to think about it. The real problem, what was really on his heart, and on his heart was he couldn't walk. And Peter saw that. And he said, well, I got, I got the answer for that, or I, I can help that. And so as believers, we also have to be willing to help. Like I said, when you see there's a need and God has chose you to do it, just do it. Just do it. Don't over explain. Just go right on in. And sometimes, yes, you're going to have to hurt people. You're going to have to cut. You're going to have to disappoint some folks. But guess what? If God said it, then who can be against me? Because I'm going to cut you. Because <laughs> I am a cut. I'm a ninja in the spirit. It's what he said. And then when you come to your senses, you know, I'm going to let you know that we're going to come and reason and talk and say this is what it had to be done this way. Because your eyes can see. What it's all about is God is strengthening each of us as we go throughout our journey. Sometimes a good cut will help. I know it do for me. My core people, I know they probably cheering with this one. Oh, yeah, because some of them know how to. I'm telling you, I could be all over the place, and they could say, one of them could say something, or next thing you know, one of them can do something, and it'll, whoop, it'll shut me down. They'd be like, okay, then. i will be like, I, I got that one. I ain't see that one coming, and I thank God for you. Cause I got that now. Now I'm back on the plane. I'm back in the battle with a clear filter. See, the most important thing is your mindset. You have to, like the Bible says, you have to renew your mind daily. So silent sufferers out there, my family, we have to tell you, first of all, like I said, acknowledge the problem. You pray, with, you go into communion with God and you acknowledge the situation. You talk with him about it and be honest about whether it's someone else's fault or your fault. If it's your fault, say it's your fault. God, I was wrong. 
that was very messed up, what I did, what I said, whatever. I need the courage to fix this thing and make it right. And I got to make this right. Don't go suffering in silence and like, I ain't going to say nothing. Because see, that's the first thing. That's the, that's the enemy. And see, he's pissed. I can feel it now. He's pissed with me. Um, because he used to have me that way. You know, I ain't going to say nothing. Just going to be nice and smile. Gonna say nothing because if I say something, they're gonna see. Well, we see anyway, just like Peter saw, you know. But, um, I just enjoy this time with you guys. Thank you, um, for all your support. And, um, I am praying for you, and I hope you're praying for me. Like I always say, you know, pray for me as I pray for you, you know, that's the way God made it to be because I need you and you need me, amen. And um, throughout, um, you know, it's been really on my heart about this because there's just so much going on in these days and especially how society is out in the world. You have to have a relationship with God, but most importantly, you got to be honest about your stuff when you're out here in this world. I mean, it's a doggy dog world and life, I'm telling you, pain is a motivator. Don't let it be an infiltrator. Don't let it infiltrate you and just take over and just have you thinking that you're nothing or you won't be anything or you're worthless. You can't do this. The devil is a lie. His feet's thinking the truth. Done. It going to show sure ain't in him. Amen. You know, but um, I love you. I'm here as your sister in Christ and courage. You know, that's what I do. I hope that the word has fell on fertile ground and I encourage you to um stay in your word and to pray and don't be afraid to pray anyway you feel like you want to pray out you know you outside pray you feel like you need to pray in the supermarket pray you know you meditate I ain't saying be crazy about it but y'all know what y'all know what I'm saying but don't ever be ashamed of your relationship with God because guess what Think about it. What if he was ashamed of sending his son to die for us? My God, my God, I don't even want to think about how that would have turned out. So, um, again, I hope that this was an encouraging um, word for you. It really helped me. Um, the next time I'm going to come back on, I'll have another word. I may piggyback on this. Cause I had so much, but God, you know, I, I do in, in my nature, I like to be well prepared. I mean, but God said, and I was not, I'm be honest real quick. I was not going to come on today with it because I felt like I wasn't prepared enough. I mean, y'all can see all this stuff that I got, you know, I was like, and the Holy Spirit said, um, give my word now. And I just believe because of where I'm at at my walk with him that it was um it was purpose for me to come on today i feel better you know i feel that god loves me i ain't got suffering silence because there's someone not only that's going through what i'm going through but there's someone that guess what i know that i can be a light and help to them they can bless me and i'm a blessing to somebody i believe that and so when you see yourself being angry family and want to be withdrawn away mm -mm. you have to talk to yourself like i did you know god loves you he loves you with everything in him he loves you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet he created you and made you exactly the way you were for a purpose can't nobody do it like you that's what you gotta get in you you know can't nobody handle it can't nobody talk like you do can't nobody walk like you do you know, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And God loves you with everything. He loves every fiber of you. You matter. Amen. Yes, you do. Don't ever let nobody tell you that you don't matter. So also, I want to leave you with this prayer as well. And um, <clears throat> this prayer that I pray over myself and also we going to pray out and I'm going to let y'all go so y'all can enjoy this wonderful day. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you with a feeling of shame and emotional hurt. I confess my transgressions to you, continually unfolding the past till all is told. You are faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. You are my hiding place 
and you, Lord, preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. I have chosen life. According to your word, you saw me while I was being formed in my mother's womb, and on the authority of your word, I was wonderfully made. Now I am your handiwork recreated in Christ Jesus. Father, you have delivered me from the spirit of fear, and I shall not be ashamed. Neither shall I be confounded and depressed. You gave me beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that I might be a tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that you might be glorified. Hallelujah. I speak out in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, offering praise with my voice and making melody with all my heart to the Lord, just as David did in 1 Samuel 30. Verse 6, I encourage myself in the Lord. I believe in God who raised from the dead Jesus, who was betrayed and put to death because of my misdeeds and was raised to secure my acquittal, absolving me from all guilt before God. Father, you anointed Jesus and sent him to bind up and heal my broken heart and liberate me from the shame of my youth and the imperfections of my caretakers. In the name of Jesus, I choose to forgive all those that have wronged me in any way. You will not leave me without support as I complete the forgiveness process. I take comfort and am encouraged and confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm. What can man do to me? Hallelujah. My spirit is the candle of the Lord searching all the innermost parts of my being and the Holy Spirit leads me into all truth. When reality exposes shame and emotional pain, I remember that suffering of this present life are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to me in me and for me and conferred on me. The chastisement needful to obtain my peace and well-being was upon Jesus. And with the stripes that wounded him, I was healed and made whole. As your child, Father, I have a joyful and confident hope of eternal salvation. This hope will never disappoint, delude, or shame me. For God loves me. For God loves has been poured out on me and in my heart through the Holy Spirit who has been given to me. Amen. That prayer, I cover myself, I cover you with it. And we and I just thank y'all. Let, let me personally pray for you as well. Heavenly Father, I come to you and I thank you, Lord God. God, your word is true. It is a light to our, I mean, it guides us, it illuminates, and I just thank you for it. I'm just so excited for what you are doing in my life as well in the lives of my social media family that at times suffer in silence hallelujah lord god i ask you in the name of jesus lord god the time is now help us lord god to continue to seek your face and not your hand help us to come out of those dead dry places lord god that we sometimes have got so comfortable in hallelujah help us lord god to not think that no one cares, Lord God. Help us to renew our mind daily, saturated with your word, Lord God. Help us to believe your word. Help us to continue to trust you with all of our heart, Lord God. Help us to lean not unto our own understanding, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to continue to go forth with those things that you have destined for us in the name of Jesus. Lord God, continue to strengthen us for the sake of our family and for the sake of those people that need what you have and placed on each and every one of us to do. Lord, help us, Lord God, to realize that there are people coming behind us that needs what we have. So, Lord, help us again, Lord God, to not suffer anything that we suffer in silence about. Help us to open our mouth and lift our hands and give your praise and glory for it because, you know, pain and suffering <clears throat> may endure for a night, but we know the joy is coming in the morning. So, Lord, I thank you with every breath in me and for the life of all my social media family and for those that suffer in silence. Break the silence now, Lord God. Give them the courage, Lord God, to trust you and to love you and help them to continue to be obedient and help them to, be, to give them a new mindset on life. 
Lord God. Help us to be all what you created us to be. In Jesus' mighty and awesome name, amen, amen, amen. I am ecstatic. And guess what? Thank you, Martha and Dwight. Oh, I see the thingies. I see the thingies. Ah, I see the thingies. I was seeing the thingies all day. But I, you see, I kept self-control because y'all just driving crazy. Thank you for the support. <laughs> ah, I had to wait, you know. I see the thingies now. Ah, I tell you, I love that social media. Friend. I love y'all. And God loves you more. Amen. I'm telling you, y'all just bless my heart. Oh, y'all watch it. Ah. <laughs> and my family, ah, y'all just a mess. Ah, just love y'all. I do. But uh, I'm telling you, it is a joy to serve the Lord. I'm telling you, because you can be free like that. You know, at one point I was not, you know, I was told y'all I was shouting. Shoot, now I let it out. If I want to shout, I shout. If I want to holler, hey, that's just what I did. You know, the spirit of the Lord lives in me and I love the Lord and I love his people and I love the things of God. And he's good. You hear me? God love is good and it endures forever. It'll conquer anything. So don't suffer in silence. And I know some of my silent sufferers going to be hit me up. You know. But anyway, you are welcome. You know, honestly, seriously, let me come down because I get so excited. I do because I love what God is doing and I hate the devil. I don't like to see the devil destroying the lives of God's people. And um, we all go through some things and we need each other. Um, so continue to pray for one another, forgive one another. And you have to repent and turn, you know, God said in his word, you know. If you repent and turn from your wicked ways, he will hear from heaven and he will heal your land. He'll heal you. He'll heal you. He will heal you. Amen. I love y'all so much. It is so good to be back on, but I'm not going to stay away from you guys too long. God bless y'all. I love y'all. And I will be talking to y'all soon, okay? Thank you, Miss Martha. Thank you. I'll see y'all soon, okay? God bless you.